Yeah, we, we try not to do only market data. Because I think that um, if they're in the mode to buy or sell, they care. But what about those seven years in between on average people move? Well, I think it's even five years now, but still, how do I say relevant in their life for the next five years before they buy or sell so that they reach out to me when it's time? And so for us, it's, you know, on our consumer stuff, it's very localized, you know, here, yes, there maybe it's a little bit of real estate. agents, when you think about sales, do you think of yourself as a hypnotist? How about uh, how often are you practicing or reading up on your neuro linguistic programming? Or let me take it one step further. Have you ever thought someone who was a master at picking up women would actually apply to you becoming a better salesperson and acquiring more listings and more buyers? Well, if you're, if you're thinking to yourself right now, dude, you're high, I implore you to stick with me here because our guest today has got some fascinating stories and is a master of all three things that I just described, including a pickup artist. Wait till you hear this story. Welcome to the show, Paul Ross. I'm looking forward to this conversation. Hey, thank you. I just want to say, as you're listening to this broadcast, I'm not sure all the points you made stop and find yourself thinking, damn, this is really interesting. I want more Paul. But as that's taking place in a way that feels so good, I just want to say, I'm so honored to be the one leading this exploration as we share together this magnificent world of hypnotic and subconscious selling. Doesn't that feel right to you? I think you have done this before. And uh, <laughs> I, I, I am, I am, I'll say it again. I'm looking forward to this conversation. And if you're not watching this, uh, Paul's wearing a shirt that says, question the media, think for yourself. I like that shirt. That's a good one. That's a good we one. We also have, you can see it. They can't see it film with listening. But there's a picture right there of Tom Cruise, who played me in the movie Magnolia, a character based on me. Okay, so let's start there. Let's start there. Let's tell us this story of Tom Tom Cruise playing you. We got to hear about this and then kind of lead into Tom the story. Cruise played a character I created. Okay. So let's this goes back. Let me let me rewind to 19. 87. And I don't know if you have a family audience or not, but I don't care. I am who I am. You can always it's a real, drop it's a real estate audience. So that, that, that keeps it pretty loose. All right. Well, cool. My parents were realtors, by the way. So back in 1987, I stumbled onto NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. I don't want to get too far or too deep into NLP. Essentially, it's a technology for modeling excellence. You could look at someone who's an excellent basketball player, excellent salesperson, excellent therapist, and break out the structure of the talent. Now you cannot become as good as they are, but you can be the best you can be using their beliefs, their physiology, their attitudes, et cetera, et cetera. So I was a guy who could not get a girlfriend. I couldn't get laid in a woman's prison with a fistful of pardons. <laughs> I'm already losing your audience, but I don't care. <laughs> or, or, or gaining them, or gaining them. Or gaining them. And so I, I used NLP to solve that problem. Then I thought, you know what? This works for me. I bet it could work for tens of thousands of guys. I'll write a book. So I wrote an angry little book about how to use this stuff to get women. I won't give you the title because that really will get me kicked off the show. And uh, I started a whole community of there's a worldwide community of pickup artists who get together in their different schools, their dojos, so to speak, and they teach their students worldwide techniques for picking up, seducing women, et cetera, et cetera. And anyway, let me ask you, before you go on, does this also apply for women to men? Women have a different set of challenges than men do. Uh, it can. Yes, it can. It can apply no matter what your orientation or gender or whatever. In any case, I'm not a woman, so I don't teach women. End of story. 
And about 15 years ago, I would get emails from students and the occasional call from a VIP student who had my number. And they would say, you know, I'm using your, I use your stuff. I found my wife. Sometimes they'd email me pictures of their family. I never got a wedding invitation to Dan at Greats. And they'd say, I'm using the stuff you taught me for pickup in my sales, in my business, and I'm getting 200, 300% better sales than I did before I used it. I thought, this is obvious, you dumb shit. Why didn't you figure it out before? So I went and I mapped it back over and I created my, my whole subtle sales system, or what I also call the subconscious sales advantage. And that's how it grew from there. I just started teaching primarily real estate and mortgage people, but if you've got the check, I've got someone who's got a huge solar company. I'm going to be training his team of 25 people. So if you've got a big enough check, I'll go to your industry. But I mostly focus on real estate and mortgage people. Why would you say that is? Why would you say you focus on these industries? Because I would think that that would be applicable to car sales, for example, but probably also is. financial it planners is. and you name it. It is, but I happen to be familiar with those industries because my parents were in real estate. So I had some familiarity with it. And my first VIP clients just happened to fall into that. So I'm familiar with it, but I've trained people from other businesses, from other, from other walks of life. So let me ask you prior to the, the 87, I think you said it was, what were you doing prior to that? Oh, I was a failed comedy writer. I actually wrote one of the worst movies ever made. If you're ever with your significant or insignificant other and you want to torment them, you can rent a movie called They Still Call Me Bruce. Not They Call Me Bruce, which is reasonably funny, but They Still Call Me Bruce. So I have a screenwriting credit on that. They took three of my scenes and they rewrote the whole thing and just crushed my desire to write. Three years later when it came out, I had a crushing, snapping moment. I literally felt like a rubber band snapping in the middle of my head and saw this blinding flash and I knew my comedy writing career was dead. <laughs> I was making scraps to earn a living. I was working as a paralegal. Okay, got it, got it. And so now I don't think you finished the story about Tom Cruise. What, oh, what, so what Tom was... Cruise, I found out through, uh, I think my intellectual property attorney at the time, who just would not go out with me. She wouldn't do it, Janine, lovely girl. So Janine, called me one day and said, look, they're putting out a movie called Magnolia and Tom Cruise is playing a character very much like you. I said, what? She said, yeah, and we're gonna look into it because there may be some copyright and trademark infringement issues. I said, no, 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 we're not gonna do anything of the sort. We're gonna go watch the movie. Now you have to go out with me. This is a matter of uh, representing your client. So she had to go on the date with me. <laughs> and the movie, Tom played a character based on my Ross Jeffries character. See, as Paul Ross, I could be ignored or, or laughed at, ignored or destroyed. But as Ross Jeffries, I could be a symbol to all those hopeless 30, 40 year old virgins who knew there's got to be an answer out there somewhere. So I created this obnoxious Ross Jeffries character. And he was actually playing that character. That character is a version of me that's vulgar, uncensored totally grandiose, but yet has some real genius to it. I love it. I mean, that's a claim. Probably the first time you've had a seduction, seduction artist, hypnotist on your show. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's interesting. Uh, I was thinking about that. We have had some interesting talents before in terms of uh, linguistic, you know, in terms of, you know, like uh, we had somebody who was a, uh, one, one of those people like with, with, um, God, the word escapes me, but when you're thinking of like a like someone in a prison or somebody who's been oh, an interrogator, uh, we've had an interrogator before. It's a similar concept. An interrogator, because my friend is a very well known interrogator. Who was it? Uh, I'll have to look it up. So while we're talking, I will look it up because the name I, I've interviewed so many people um, that, that don't just roll off my tongue anymore. But um, let's so let's continue, and I'll, and I'll come back to that. I will come back to that. Uh, so let's 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 carry this conversation forward because I think it's fascinating. It's always fascinating to get to know people, and and what their background is. You have a very unique background compared to most because this is not the typical conversation I'm having. But I think everybody listening wants to know. Okay, 
how in the hell is this applicable? Uh, and specifically, I'm going to pick on the pickup artist concept. How or how is it applicable? I think people can understand that one can equate to the other. But yeah, how? so so let me begin to draw some of the parallels. First and foremost, I always teach my students, whether it's sales or pickup or whatever it is, that the number one consideration you have to have is what state of mind do you want your prospect to be in when you're approaching them and making your sales presentation, your clothes, whatever it is. What state of mind do you want them in? Before you think about what you're going to say, let me give you a metaphor. The metaphor is this, and this is not a trick question. If I had a sheet of gold foil and a sheet of cardboard, and I wanted to conduct an electric current down those conductive mediums, which one would conduct the electricity? It's not a trick question. The gold foil or the cardboard? Gold foil. Exactly. We know this. So think of your words, whatever your sales pitch is, whatever your attempts to get rapport, whatever it is, Think your words is the electricity, but the state of mind your client is in, that's the conductive medium. Do you want them in states of skepticism, states of being unable to focus? Which, by the way, I'm going to put a little pin here, a little pause here. Your clients, your prospects' inability to focus is your number one or number two biggest enemy to your sale. It's not that they don't trust you. That's sure. Now, it's true, we have to get no like, and trust, but that's not enough. Because nowadays, your prospects, number one, can't focus. And number two, they don't trust themselves. So you've got to be able to get your prospects in those gold foiled states, gold foil states of focus and trusting themselves. They don't trust their own ability to make a good decision. That's for a lot of reasons. It's related to the reasons why they can't focus. So here are the reasons why they can't focus. First and foremost, there's too many inputs. Your clients nowadays are like that super hot chick in the club. She's got so many guys chasing after her and so many bright lights and shiny objects in front of her. She can't focus. I'm not putting women down. I'm just saying that's the reality of, of how it works. So your prospects have so many different inputs. There's Instagram, Instagram Reels, Facebook Instant Messenger, TikTok, I'm holding up my smart device, my iPhone, texting, you name it. We have so many different inputs. We've got YouTube. I remember when YouTube first came on, the ads were two minutes long. Now you can click off after like 15 seconds, I believe. Yeah, in some cases, five. Five. So you see the attention span. It's dropped down to five seconds. So particularly if you're in a highly competitive field like real estate, and everyone else is doing the same techniques you are. If you're using the same old off-the-shelf trainings, whatever they are, uh, however good they may have been, however effective they may have been, you're, if you don't get to their door first or you don't get on their phone first, then they already would have heard it from your competition. So why should they buy into you? So it becomes a foot race to see who can get there faster. And foot races, foot races are exhausting. So we need to do something radically different. The first radically different thing is to take a different perspective on what sales means. To me, sales is about creating states of consciousness, just as seduction is, if I, or pickup is, or attracting someone is. So I'm gonna attract someone, am I gonna think, how do I get their phone number? Or am I gonna think, how can I use my language and my words to create a feeling of connection, a feeling of intrigue, a feeling of I want to learn more. And so states of consciousness, sales is about states of consciousness. Yes, it is about getting your ideas into the prospect's mind, but it's also about expanding their mind to include your ideas. So the idea of sales being about expanding consciousness and creating consciousness is a completely batshit crazy way of looking at things. I don't think anyone else has presented it in this way before, but it's the very ways of thinking and feeling and acting that stand so far outside of what you're used to doing that hold the potential of bringing you results that are so far outside of what you're used to enjoying. So that's why I came up with this radically different perspective. And so your clients need to be able 
to focus. And the second thing, this is really important, no like and trust is no longer enough. Write it down somewhere, folks. No like and trust is no longer enough. It's necessary, but it's not sufficient because your prospects just don't trust themselves to make a good decision. They're overloaded, they're overwhelmed, they don't have the focus to make a good decision, and their institutions have screwed them over. Think about it. when the banks collapsed, collapsed back in 2007, 2008, the market crashed, people don't trust their government, it's natural to be suspicious of, of institutions. And finally, when buying and selling a home, that's probably for most people, not all people, but for most people, the most expensive investment they're ever going to make. So it's a very, very big decision. So how do you lead your prospect to trust their own ability, not just trust you, but trust their own ability to make a good decision? I'm gonna sneeze in a second. It will be like five in a row. I'm gonna be fine. Cause I, I, cause I want to, <laughs> as you do that, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. I, I, wanna, I wanna go back to a couple of things. Uh, that that was a uh, he predicted that by the way I'm just going to point that out he predicted five and he and he nailed it yeah uh, I think it's fascinating what you say because it's so true and I'm putting myself in those shoes of can't focus and I he, and I and I almost self analyze myself and say if a TV show if a video if a book if a salesperson uh, if my employee it doesn't matter. If, if, if they have my attention, like they're clearly, they're, they're, they've won, right? They're winning. They did something right. But the reality is how often do they actually get my attention? And, and, and I wanted to go back to this and ask you this because, you know, our attention is being taken from all these medias, all these media platforms, but I think the media platforms have created that just convoluted consciousness if you want to call it that to where as i'm talking to someone or someone's talking to me i'll use myself as an example they say something that makes me start thinking about something either relevant or non and then they've lost me correct now how do you create focus well you can tell stories that's a great way but why not tell stories or shortcut that and use the power of suggestion and the power of hypnotic commands. So if I wanted someone to trust that they can not only, if I wanted someone to see me as their leader and also to trust their own ability to make a good decision, I would, uh, let's say I'm trying to get a listing. What, here's what I wouldn't say at first. At first, I wouldn't say, all right, before I show you our marketing plan, which will prove to you that, that how many homes in, your, in this area, just like yours, we've sold at a premium price, I just want to encourage you to ask any questions that come up, okay? I wouldn't say that. Because first of all, before I show you, it's something I'm doing to you. Does that make sense? Words, my book is called Subtle Words Itself. And words are powerful. Words have hypnotic effect. Words structure our consciousness. They shape our decisions. And they drive our behavior. Say, our the, words, say, the, name, say the name of the book again. Subtle Words Itself. Subtle words your prospects so. to convince themselves to buy and add top dollars to your bottom line. Got it. So, so I want to get my grab my clients focus, get them to view me as their leader, and then get them to trust that trust and own ability to make a great decision. So I here's how I would present a marketing plan. It's gonna sound unusual and very different, even batshit crazy. I encourage you to listen and then we'll workshop. Together, all right, we have time. It's a relatively good chunk of time we have for podcast. So I'd say, before we explore our marketing plan together today, I just want to invite you to please share the questions that naturally arise when a great decision is being made. Now, you probably already, from the way I've said it, hear the difference in those mm -hmm. two things. Can you hear the difference? Oh, yeah. Before we, that's something we're doing together, explore. Here's the clever thing. This involves uh, implication and a really powerful subconscious communication. Before we explore. Well, explore has so, it's a very powerful word because exploration is associated with novelty. 
When we explore, it implies a new experience, correct? Novelty is a hardwired driver of human behavior. We're hardwired as humans through evolution, or if you believe in a creator, okay, he, put, he or she put it into us. We're hardwired to seek out novelty. That's how we grow as children. My little one-year-old great niece opens up all the cabinets, pulls everything out, hides in them. She wants to explore the world. We wouldn't grow in, into from infancy if we did. So explore is hard to explore is a trigger for novelty. For every exploration, there must be a leader. And for every leader, there must therefore be a uh, student follower. Exactly. So I'm implying, I'm implying that I'm their leader, and I'm implying, therefore, a double implication embedded inside that first implication is another implication. If I'm the leader, they therefore must, by an inference, be the follower. So we're creating in the mind, the subconscious mind of our prospects in the first 10, 15 seconds of communication that we are their leader and they are our follower. We're not using the word leader or follower, we're using the word explore. Before we explore together, so think about that one word, creates leadership, followership, and appeals to novelty. Incredible power in one word. We're pushing hardwired buttons down into the brainstem, but we're also getting into the unconscious or subconscious mind as a hypnotist. I use them interchangeably. So if I'm your leader, I don't even need rapport. I've gone beyond rapport into compliance. Rapport is only as useful as it creates responsiveness and compliance. Compliance. Compliance means basically to to obey. Yeah, to, got it. All right. So before we explore our, meaning it's not mine, it's our, both of us, marketing plan together, that's an, that implies relationship. Okay. I just want to invite you to please ask, no, no, please share the questions that naturally arise. And here comes the kill shot. Are you ready? Go on that naturally will arise when a great decision is being made. Now look at that. Did I say a great decision to list with me today is being made? No. It's kind of, it was, it, was, it was a vague statement. Exactly, it's vague. And when you say something that's deliberately vague, the unconscious mind of the listener will fill in the blank. It'll search for every meaning and pick the one that in the emotional context fits. Granted that we've already used a chain of suggestions to get them on the unconscious level to think of thus as their leader, to think, uh, to feel triggered by novelty and seeking out novelty, then their unconscious mind will interpret a great decision as being made as, yeah, a great decision to follow this person and to let them be my listing agent or the person who's going to sell my home. Do you get it? Mm -hmm. This is all done very quickly in the space of about a minute. So my claim is you can skip traditional report. Traditional report techniques for their time were okay. Just like a, I don't know, World War I biplane for its time would shoot down another plane. Right now, nowadays, I'd rather have an F-35 or F-22 Raptor or even uh, F-18 Hornet. So traditional rapport techniques, they're clunky, matching the other person's posture. People can catch them. They've seen it before. A technique identified as a te technique disarmed. They've seen it before. It takes a lot of focus and time to execute it. Oh, am I standing in the right way? And stupid techniques like commenting on the fish on the wall. Oh, those are beautiful children. How many... How old are they? Oh, they're your grandchildren? I have five grand. That's stupid BS. It may have worked to some extent, but it's diminishing in its returns. It's like a 1972 Oldsmobile. It ran great on the first 100,000 miles, but now it's creaking along at half a million and it's running out of useful life. So on that vein, you know, when it when it comes to 
You're saying that, so for example, you know, let's just say somebody says, well, what I do before I meet with a client or, or you know, a, a, a perspective or a prospect is, is I go stalk them on social media. I learn a little bit about them. And when I go meet with them, I have done my homework and I bring up something that might catch them off guard and they're impressed because I've done my homework. You're saying that, for example, is an old fashioned technique. Yes. That takes work. I'm lazy. True. Okay. Fair. Fair. And so you're saying rather than, well, first of all, you know, being different is kind of something that y'all have to just kind of get used to in all facets of all business, because if you're not different nowadays, you're not going to stand out. But in this particular case, just changing the way you articulate something you're saying will change the results. Language, yes, language is extraordinarily powerful. Hmm. Extraordinarily powerful. I used a bit of patter at the beginning of this show that was incredibly vague. I said, before we begin this exploration of the world of subconscious selling today, I'm not sure all the ways, which implies what? When I say I'm not sure all the ways implies that there's going to be at least one, if not more. All the ways you might stop and find yourself thinking, I want more Paul. But as that's taking place, I loaded it up with hypnotic suggestions. Hmm. I, I wonder how many people, though, just maybe focus on the want more of Paul and think to themselves, geez, this guy sure has conceded. No, in the context of how I was doing it, that's not what they'll catch. I said, you might. You might, I didn't okay. say you will. So I used a softener so Got that it. they wouldn't think that. Got it. So, all right, let's 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 uh, bring this over to real estate. You know, you said that's the you know, real estate and mortgage is the majority of your of your uh, target audience and clientele. Uh, so, how does this relate? You know, how how is a real estate agent uh, beyond what you just said? You know, give me some examples of how they would use this and can sure. can take tactical, tangible notes sure. and use it in their business. Sure. Well, one of the most useful things you can do is use what I call pattern interrupts. Pattern interrupts are ways to take your prospect or client's expected way of behaving or thinking or feeling, disrupting them and then turning their mind in a different direction because people think, act, feel, respond, move through the world in predictable patterns, break them, and you create a window of suggestibility. Let me unpack it and give you an example. All right? You probably have gone and to get a listing and you've heard something like, well, we need more time to think it over. Classic. Mm -hmm. And so traditional things would be, well, can I ask you, what is it that you need to think through that would, that's stopping you from moving forward? You could do that. That's not bad. What are some of the responses you have when you've heard that? Oh, geez, you're putting me on the spot for, uh, well, first of all, I don't because I'm not a real estate agent, but if you want to challenge me, give me the question one more time. I need more time to think it over. Well, uh, time is money, as you might realize, and there's probably opportunities that exist right now that uh, the more time that you take to make this decision, those could be opportunities that are flying out the window. I like it. Here's what I would say. If they say, I need more time to think it over, I would use what I call a counter example. I'd say, I understand. Can I ask you a question? Have you ever taken a long time to think something over and it still turned out to be a very bad decision? Maybe it's not about time, but about the clarity you need to recognize you can move forward today. So thinking about it like that, what do we need to get on the table so you can gain that clarity and move forward in a way that feels totally right for you? So we're taking that, that fear, the real fear is they're going to make a bad decision. Quickly, yeah. And so we use a counterexample. Have you ever taken a long time to make a bad, a good uh, decision? Have you ever taken a long time to make a decision? Or have you ever taken a long time to think something over and it still turned out to be a bad decision? Yeah. 
everyone's had that experience, mm -hmm. everyone. So immediately it erases the objection. It gives, um, gives the prospect objection amnesia. And then you redefine it. It's not about being time, but about being clarity. And so once they buy into the idea that it's about clarity, then they accept the presupposition that you're the one who's going to bring the clarity to them. Because remember, earlier on, you established yourself as the leader. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And it's a way to smoke out the actual objection. A lot of times the prospects don't know what their objections are. They're just muddled and they don't want to appear stupid by saying, well, we don't understand. Even if they don't, it's seldom that they're going to say that. They might, but they may not. Would you consider that more along the lines of uh, hypnosis over neuro-linguistic programming, or is it a little it's bit of a combination? It's a hypnotic technique. Milton Erickson, the very famous hypnotherapist, he was a psychiatrist and an MD, of course, who redefined the whole field of hypnosis back in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. In my opinion, he was to hypnosis what Einstein was to physics. He would frequently use pattern interrupts. So I think it's an example of hypnosis, but I learned the techniques through NLP, through NLP seminars, because one of the people that the founders of NLP studied, remember I said NLP was a way of unpacking people's talent. One of the people they studied was Milton Erickson. So a lot of just conversational hypnosis or conversational power of suggestion comes from the work of Dr. Erickson. Hmm. And so, you know, I, I guess, first of all, I, I can honestly say as a listener, because I'm interviewing you, um, I can say it's a different, it's a different feeling from the conversation. It almost feels therapeutic in a way. I as think selling is therapeutic. And I'll tell you why. Because if you have, I think our prospects often don't really believe that they can afford something. They don't believe that they can have something. They don't believe they deserve it or are capable of claiming it. When you can expand their mind past all that, expand their consciousness to embrace new possibilities about what they can own, what they can enjoy, what they can explore, you're actually doing healing work. I know that sounds crazy, but I truly believe it. You're expanding their mind past their limitations. That's a healing and heroic thing to do. So if you pause a minute, I know it's a crazy idea. How are things now completely changing when you pause and think to yourself, what I'm doing is heroic. What I'm doing is healing for others. What does that do to your willingness to pick up the phone? What does that do to your willingness to knock on a door? What does that do to your willingness to make a presentation, to share a presentation? What does that do to your willingness to create the circumstances where there's going to be a close? What does that do? If you were to just for a moment, mysteriously, effortlessly, miraculously, magically take on that perspective that your job through your selling, you're, you're inducing, creating the opportunity for healing and expansion and personal change. If every day you woke up and thought, hey, wait a minute, I'm a hero, I'm a healer. What I'm doing is expanding consciousness and healing people in the process by changing their beliefs of what they think is possible. I'm creating the experience of novelty for them, which is something every human seeks out. I'm a freaking, I'm a freaking badass for doing this. And I'm serving people in a way far beyond what they teach me in real estate school or in whatever course, this is something that is really, really awesome. And if you were to stop and think, wait, I'm not selling real estate, I'm selling decisions. I'm always selling decisions and good feelings about decisions. I'm a decision service technician. Everyone always says, well, I'm here to serve. Well, serve what exactly? I'm here to say, you're here to serve your clients and prospects to make a great decision. What about those that say they're selling an experience? All right. So what is that experience? 
well, you're uh, purchase. You're probably making the biggest purchase of your entire life. That can be stressful, and so it's my job to make that as as peaceful and smooth a process without with 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 as limit right. as little stress so as ultimately, possible. Ultimately, the biggest part of that is to sell the decision. I understand what you're saying, but this core of the experience is the experience of feeling comfortable making a decision. Mm-hmm. That's the hardest. Part. It goes deep. It goes deeper than that. Is what you're saying. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I I think that makes that makes a hell of a lot of sense. Now, let me ask you a question because I think there's got to be some listeners that are thinking this to themselves. Because when it comes to this sort of thing, you know, it's it's uh, I'm I'm going to use a very rough, harsh term. Um, so forgive. Uh, I'm going to ask the Talk audience for forgiveness. Now. Uh, <laughs> well, here's what I think, you know, here's what I would say. And I'm, so I'm intentionally playing devil's advocate, but how is this not a mind fuck? Hmm, that's a good question. I think it's a mind expander is uh, look, let me put it this way. It's a mind expander. I have a nephew who's a magician in Las Vegas. And I said, Seth, when you do your tricks and he stopped me right there, he said, uncle Paul, I don't do tricks. I create illusions that lead people to wonder. And in that process, I misdirect them long enough so that when their attention is turned back to where I want it to be, <clears throat> they have an experience they weren't expecting. It creates a state of wonder. So <clears throat> is he mind fucking people or is he engineering wonder through misdirection? He's not lying to them. He's misdirecting them through where he's putting his eyes, what he's doing with his hands the expectations that he's setting up. Hmm. So it, I don't think it's a mind fuck. A mind fuck is when you press down on people's fear of loss, when you press down on people's uh, guilt, when you press down hard and uh, on their need to please other people, that's mind fucking. When you okay. lie about the, the, you deliberately lie and say, you know, this home based on, on what other homes are selling around you. Yeah, we can get you the price you're asking. And blah 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 blah. That's fine. Got it. What about what about those that say this is hokey? This is what hokey. This is hokey. Like this it's is. Uh, it's almost like you. You think of put it in terms of medicine. And there are people that believe in modern medicine, and there are people that believe in holistic medicine. And some will say one the, the holistic side is very hokey. It's just a bunch of BS. What do you say to that? Well, <laughs> here's what I say. I say your own results are your best proof. So go out and try my three, my free stuff. I have a free five-part series called Invisible Influence. You can get it for free. I'll give you the number to text. To Perfect. Opt in. Let's make let's make them wait to the end. I'll make them wait to the end. That's fine. But what? it's it's five parts, and I give it away free precisely because my stuff is so batshit crazy. Each one has a little actual little tip. You can go out and use and see the result. I don't expect people to believe me because I have to give shit away for free. Well, not shit, gold for free because no one's going to believe me because this is so offbeat and different. So if it's free and it takes 10 to 15 minutes to read the damn report, uh, give up that time and go try it for yourself. You'll be astounded and you'll have to bite your cheeks because you'll be laughing on the inside. Like, I don't believe this works. Yeah. But it works. Well, you got nothing to lose by trying. The, the The thing that I would say to your batshit crazy is, is that's like me saying, why is this not a mind fuck? You calling it a mind expander? I would say it's not batshit crazy. It's different. And 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 our audience has been, you know, we have trained them uh, because, you know, doing video for your business was different. Using social media for your business was different. Going on social media and being authentic is different because everybody just wants to follow the herd which is dilution and everybody wants to follow their broker, which is old fashioned. And those that have a differentiation mindset will say, Good. no, Paul, it's not bad shit. Crazy. It's brilliant. Those are the people, look, I maybe work with three to five VIP clients a year. And one of the things I always qualify them on is, are you willing to take on a totally unconventional way of doing things? Are you an edge seeker? Are you looking to compete? to crush your competition, but also crush your own personal best. Because I like people around the edge. They're the people who, who can be led 
and it gives me novelty to work with people like that. I don't want to work with anybody else. So what is that? What is that? So what does that look like? So if somebody, if somebody says, okay, like this is, you've got me, uh, I, I believe I, I want, I want to go down this path. It, it's no different than, than scripting or, 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 you know, working on, on, um, <laughs> well, I mean, in this, in the sense that like, you can't just listen to this podcast, walk away and master this. So how does one improve these skills? You have to start out with a basic knowledge of first and foremost, you have to change your own belief system about what's possible. You have to look at your own beliefs around your deservingness, about your capability, about your possibility and about your willingness. So that takes some personal transformation, which I'm, I'm gonna toot my own horn. I'm uniquely qualified to do. After all, I've helped tens of thousands of guys who couldn't get a date in their 30s and 40s or have the worst self-esteem, the worst kind of shame. So I can help people who are already successful go way beyond whatever they think has been stopping them to get to the next level, whether it's imposter syndrome or so you got to work on yourself. And the second chunk is learning how to apply this, learning the principles of how this stuff works and then how to specifically apply it in sales situations. And by the way, one of the things I love to do is to look at online videos, to look at social media posts and go, no, 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 no. Just put in these one or two little subtle words and you'll tap into the unconscious or subconscious minds. I use it interchangeably, being a hypnotist of your prospects in a much more profound and powerful way. Is that, is that, is that where they should be using them in their hook? Using them in their hook, but also in the way they tell a story. If they tell a story that's too much focused on I, 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 and then I found I, I I'm this, how can I put this? As you're watching this video, I'm not sure all the ways you might pause and find yourself growing more curious about what it is I'm going to reveal. But in the next 30 seconds, I'm going to share with you, bing, bing, bing. That's the kind of language that gets people to really pay attention. Yeah. So go back and listen to what he just said and, and use that, use that language. As a I whole. love doing this. I love, uh, I have a client who I just fired as a matter of fact, Jeez. but this guy works for EXP. Do you know what EXP is? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. So he works for EXP and he was working on recruiting agents to come over to him. And I was rewriting his emails and rewriting his, his, listening to his phone calls that he recorded saying, no, no, dude, that sucks. And just rewriting with hypnotic language. I'm also a copywriter. I've been writing my own copy to sell my courses for 30 years. So I combine hypnotic language with my skill as a copywriter, but that's why I'm so freaking expensive. <laughs> Got it. Because I deliver up the goods. So if somebody wants to improve and they want to, to go down this path, yeah. Uh, what what can they do in order to learn more, gain more uh, experience with this and, and understand how they should be articulating sure. in order to be more effective? Sure. Well, two things. First of all, if you want to get my Invisible Influence series, it goes over how to use this language so you create that sense of leadership so you can go beyond rapport and into compliance. It also teaches you some, te some very powerful techniques for eliminating limiting beliefs in seconds. Like you don't need years of therapy to do it quickly. Teach you some other things, how to do the close. It's five parts, very, very short little reports. Text the word COMPEL, C-O-M-P-E-L, to 411-321, 411-321. If you're outside the United States, you can use WhatsApp and text the same word COMPEL to 909-741-1321. If you are someone who's making at least, you know, I don't know, like 500 grand a year in commissions and you're willing to invest in yourself and you're an edge junkie, you're seeking the cutting edge that's going to take you to a level that's going to crush your own personal best. I really do only take a maximum of five clients a year. You can apply to work with me. If you go to speakerpaulross.com forward slash apply. 
I know I'm coming off as arrogant here, but I just don't want to waste your time or waste my time. No, I don't think that's arrogant at all. I think it's uh, it's being honest. Uh, you said it was speakerpaulross.com forward slash apply. Got it. And uh, once again, the uh, text was text the word compel, C-O-M-P-E-L to 411321 if you're in the States. If you're not, go back and listen to the instructions because I didn't write that one down. Yeah, 909-741-1321. Use WhatsApp. I like it. What, so l- the last thing I'm going to ask you one more question is, is um, you know, we were just talking about hooks and you just gave one. Uh, let me let me just just test you one more time and say, you know, the most one of the most common videos that a real estate agent puts out is a, a home video. Uh, I'm here at an open house. Check out my new listing, uh, you know, that sort of thing. What would be a powerful, you know, hypnotic hook? That's going to get more eyeballs on said video. On the video. On the video. So I've seen these before where the agent is actually, you're talking about they're actually doing the walkthrough at home yeah. themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so that's a very interesting one. I would first of all say, hi, hi everyone. It's Deb Smith again. And today I've got a real feast for your eyes. So I don't know all the ways you may find yourself getting as excited as I am as we do this virtual walkthrough. But as that's taking place, I invite you to just give yourself permission to feel really good about what could be your dream home. That's good. That's good. Except except one thing I'm going to correct you on as a video, as a video savant. Don't introduce yourself to start. Just start with the feast you're. Uh, because you don't need to introduce yourself. They already know who the hell you are. So don't don't even waste that two seconds doing That's it. That's fine. I'll take that. That's Which excellent. The suggestions I, I gave, find yourself growing more excited. No, the the the, the hook was, it was excellent. Yeah. That's, that's uh, what, what you shared with our audience today is probably taking outside of the box of what how most people think. This is not I, the way most people think in real no, estate. I want to take it outside the box. You know, if you, this is one of the the big advantages in my thinking, because I came, I come from outside the field, I'm not trapped in the assumptions of the field. The field is like a matrix uh, that's been put over your eyes. It may work, but it also has assumptions that may not be valid or may be extremely limiting. So because I come from outside the field, I can go, no, 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 no. When I was a little boy, my mother taught me the story of the emperor's new clothes. Do you know this story? Mm, About I think so. The crazy emperor who one day decided he wanted the perfect suit of clothes. And he looked in the mirror, he was completely naked and said, oh, look at my beautiful clothes. Yeah. So he decided he was going to have a parade. He ordered all his subjects to line the parade route and throw flowers at him and and praise him in his new clothes and everyone's saying long live the emperor his new beautiful clothes are amazing except the little boy who said the emperor is naked and my mother said you're going to be that kid throughout your whole life who yells out the emperor is naked and he's got a tiny dick too <laughs> oh. so thank you, mom. my mom encouraged me my, both my parents but my mom especially encouraged me to be an independent thinker, to think outside the box, and even think in ways that challenge and sometimes make other people have the uncomfort, discomfort that can come from too much novelty all at once. It's fantastic. If if our listeners want to connect with you, obviously you gave them the uh, the application. You gave them somewhere to text. Is there any place where they can go follow you? Yes. Uh, if you go to speaker Paul Ross forward slash LinkedIn. I'll take you to my LinkedIn. Same on Facebook too, right? Speaker Paul Ross. Yes. Uh, but I think the best way to do it, follow me on LinkedIn. I, I'm getting more and more sour on Facebook. I don't even want to give out my Facebook. Follow me on LinkedIn. Facebook, I've grown very sour on Facebook. And the deplatforming and the rest of it is just obnoxious to me. Fair enough. Fair enough. Go follow him on LinkedIn. Text in compel to 411321 or go to speakerpaulross.com forward slash apply. If you think you are one of the five 
that belongs in his yeah. small world. If you're doing, and if you're doing close to half a mil in commissions and, and you don't mind having some hard work put in front of you, we'll get you going within 90 days. And uh, I think um, that's all I have to say about it. I would love to find out who that interrogator is. So maybe off the air, you can tell me. I already got it. I will give it to you off the air. And uh, Paul, this has been fantastic. Thank, thank you, you for uh, thank you for being here today. I look forward to sharing this with our audience and uh, hopefully we uh, stay in touch. Bingo. Welcome Agents Podcast.